Yaskawa. <laughs> We'll move on to the home uh, LS pulse block. And uh, it's a fairly straightforward procedure here. Provides a complete homing routine. It'll move an axis to a limit switch and then reverse direction and find the motor C channel. And then move to an offset value and establish a new position. So this is used, a typical application is just about everything. Uh, even, even applications that use an absolute encoder need some sort of reference routine. It could be something like this. Um, that you might have in your program. So before using this function block, be sure to first enable your end of travel limit sensors. And then second, it's highly recommended you set parameter 1.1 equal to 1. Uh, it will default to 0, which means that when you hit an end of travel limit, the axis will disable itself in that direction. Um, that's not really desirable for this type of application, so if you plan to use limits, uh, we recommend that you set it to 1, which is to decelerate the motor to a stop and set a servo lock condition. Basically, that means just keep it enabled. Um, so you'll find that inside here, um, it's really a combination of PLC open functions in a sequence. First, it uses a MC step limit switch to go find the limit. And the, de the deceleration, as you see from the trace that I show you, is uh, essentially immediate, but it can be torque limited if you need uh, by setting a value in parameter 406. Uh, then it'll move on to an MC step ref pulse, which is searching for the C channel. That's the creep uh, part of this function. And the creep for this function block is always performed opposite direction of the approach or the search for the limit switch. Then it does an MC move relative. And then finally, it uh, sets the position for your new absolute position. So you can see that here. If I switch to this example, just by opening the function block and scrolling through here, here's our step limit switch, move relative, step ref pulse, another move relative, and then a final set position. So this is a great example, again, of a handy function that saves the user from having to reconstruct all of that code every single time. A um, little more about this home structure. Um, inside the home struct, which is also placed inside the axis structure, by the way, uh, you have things for setup, which is direction and switch mode. You have your approach configuration, your creep configuration, and then your offset and new position configuration. There's also a bit in here for homed. This is all user controlled, so the function block does nothing with this. This is for external use typically on a power-up that requires homing, you would initialize this to false, and then at the end of the procedure, uh, the user program would set it to true and things of that nature. There's also two tricky ones in here. Uh, the direction is an enumerated data type of a data type MC direction, and only the positive direction or negative direction are valid. Uh, so that's a, an integer of zero or two. And the switch mode, um, which is uh, kind of determining how it should respond to the limit switch, and only edge on is supported. So it's really the rising edge of the switch is the only thing that, that will activate this. And you also notice that uh, there are some limits uh, for the approach and the creep. You have a distance limit, which is the maximum allowable distance it can travel uh, before it aborts out of the uh, function or a time limit, and they can be active simultaneously. Either one of them can be deactivated by setting their value to zero. So, <clears throat> um, so let's take a look at this. Now, uh, I wrote this note here for myself uh, to remind myself that uh, before you run this, because it has a search for the C channel that uses a latch function, okay, so you got to make sure there's no other MC touch probe functions active, like the product buffer. So uh, I'm going to have to go back here and uh, be sure that I uh, shut off my master here and then also um, stop the product buffer. Um, so the rest of the homing uh, setups can be set anywhere. They can be set in the program. I've chosen to set them here in my initialize code. So you know, just for axis one dot home is where all the, the homing elements are placed within the axis structure. And you just go through and set these. Uh, this axis is a, 
actually a zero to 360 degree uh, rotary axis. So I just set my XL to 50 revs a second, you know, approach at 10 revs a second, and so on. And at the end, I'm going to set a position of zero. So let's just simply trigger this. So while it's searching, you'll see that it is busy, and then done came on for one scan. And if we go to the uh, logic analyzer, we'll take a look and see what happened. So here's where it started searching. Uh, this, this value here, uh, the cyan value, is our commanded velocity, so it's searching in the negative direction. And here it's running negative. And then it found our end of travel limit, and it did a little bit of a backup move just to get off that limit. Um, so it reversed direction. So this move is a positive move. Then it started creeping in the positive direction until it found the C channel, at which point it uh, went back to the C channel. So uh, if you notice here, you can see just a little bit of a negative velocity. That's because it does actually stop, back up, and return to the position of the C channel. And then it makes its final offset move forward and sets position to zero. Now you see this little dip here in the position. Um, that is because the, when you search for the C channel, uh, the end of it, it does actually set a position automatically. So it set a position to zero. And because it's a rotary axis, it, um, it rolled to uh, you know, between zero and, and 360. So it actually did roll a little bit. Uh, but since this offset move is a relative move, it doesn't matter. And what matters is when it gets to the end, it defines a position that we want, which is zero.